All right, there we go. Hopefully that's working. Hey everybody, Justin here. Sorry if you caught a little bit of uh, like the tail end of the beginning of a conversation. Uh, I, uh, I definitely thought I started the stream, but I didn't. Welcome. Today we have Kyle Kuhn with me. Uh, just like an hour hangout chat conversation, Q&A, whatever with Kyle Kuhn. Uh, I think a lot of you are probably going to know who he is, but if you don't, I will let him introduce himself. I think this is going to be a fun one. It's cool to talk to somebody who's way better than myself. I think I'm going to learn a lot today. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and bring Kyle on in. And if you have any questions or anything, feel free to leave it in the chat. Last time I did this with Kyle Peace, I think I messed up some of the video settings, so hopefully the video is a lot better this time. Uh, the audio should be good. If anybody has any audio glitches or anything, if it looks weird, let me know. I will do my best. Uh, with that said, let me go ahead and bring Kyle in. All right, there we go. Kyle, you should be on. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for reaching out. Thanks for having me on tonight. I'm um, super pumped to just uh, hang out with you and uh you know, talk uh, triathlon and, and whatnot. But I mean, dude, come on, bringing me on after uh, having Kyle Pease on a couple of weeks ago, man, that's, come on, man, that's, that's a tough, that's a tough cookie and a tough act to follow. Kyle's a good guy. Uh, it's funny. I want to talk about this a little bit later, but it's weird. The, the circles that you and I run in and like triathlon and ultra running and like some of the levels of sport that we're talking about, really small circles a lot of the same people they they really are yeah i was uh <clears throat> well yeah we'll definitely have to chat about that that later because i uh um i think we were bouncing uh some some stuff around on instagram earlier and yeah and uh, you got your i mean we're both connected to a couple of uh just pretty amazing dudes um <laughs> that that yeah. played some big roles in our, in our lives so uh yeah man, we're definitely gonna have to chat about that it's pretty neat um so why don't you why don't we start with you just giving an introduction because I'm going to guess that not everybody here knows about you. So like I said to everybody else, feel free to ask questions of Kyle in the chat. I think, uh, I suspect you're going to have some, he's a great person to ask questions from. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you're known for and why we're talking to you. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know why you're talking to me. Uh, I, you know, I just, well, feel, you never know. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I just feel like I'm a, I'm just some crazy, some crazy dude that's trying to, to, uh, to live an adventurous life. But, um, but no, so, um, I, I am a, um, I'm a totally blind, um, paratriathlete. Um, I compete, um, currently I, I compete at the, um, world triathlon level. So formerly known, <laughs> formerly known as, formerly ITU. Known as. yeah, formerly known as ITU, um, triathlon. So, um, I, I'm currently, um, I, I live and train, primarily out of the Olympic and Paralympic Training Center in Colorado Springs and um, gunning for a uh, gunning for a spot to go uh, to Tokyo for the uh, uh, postponed um, 2020 Paralympics uh, for the sport of paratriathlon. Yep. Um, so that I mean, that's that's, you know, my, my current <laughs> what I uh, what I've been uh, working toward for the last uh, couple of years. Um, but um, I uh, I'm a, I became, I guess, decently, uh, I started making the, the rounds and, and people started recognizing me in, uh, in, uh, you know, in the 2017 and 2018, when, um, I, I was kind of breaking into the, uh, the Ironman triathlon world, um, in 2017, I was able to go under 12 hours for, uh, for, for an Ironman. And then uh, in 2018, I, I, I was able to go uh, under 11 hours and, and I was the first totally blind. Uh, person to do that for for an official uh, Ironman branded triathlon. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so that, I mean so that was that was pretty cool. And then uh, and then USA Triathlon came and knocking on the door and said uh, we think you should uh, <laughs> focus on sprint triathlon and uh, come over to the uh, the dark side of uh, of ITU racing. So. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but uh, but no, it's been uh, it's been it's been real awesome. Uh, but but yeah, no. So definitely uh in, in more recent years, definitely known as a, uh, as a triathlete for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I will say it again, just because I feel like maybe everybody's a little bit too self-conscious to say it. you're like actually really fast <laughs> and competing at a pretty damn high level, which is really cool. <laughs> no, I, I, I appreciate it. I mean, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm decently fast, 
but um, look, I'm always, I'm always trying to get faster, yeah. um, especially at the, the level that I have to, to compete at. Um, some of the guys out there on the, on the world triathlon circuit are, are ridiculously fast. Um, mm-hmm. The 2019 world champion, um, uh, you know, when he, uh, you know, when you're racing in Lausanne, um, you know, swam uh, just over a 10 minute, um, 10 minutes for a 750 meter swim. And unreal. And I think uh, he ran like a 16 minute and 40 second 5k uh, coming off, coming off a really hilly bike. So, um, yeah. so there's some, you know, there's some ridiculously uh, amazing competition um, out there. And, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, trying to do my best to uh, plug away and, and, and compete with, with those guys. Yeah. And, and we'll, I'm sure we'll have to talk about this, but you competed at Daytona too. I did. I did. Um, so I did the sprint triathlon last weekend or what's it? Yeah. Week, week and a half ago now. Ago? Yeah. Yeah. Week, week and a half ago. Um, so I, I went down and, and I, uh, uh, I raced with, uh, several of my, uh, my USA paratriathlon teammates. Um, uh, actually a couple of, uh, you know, three, three, uh, three medalists from the, the, the 2016, uh, Rio games. Um, so silver medalist, uh, Haley Danishevitz, um, bronze medalist, Melissa Stockwell, and then, uh, gold medalist, uh, Grace Norman, uh, we're all, all raced there as well. Um, and, and so we all, uh, along with a, a few other teammates, um, Eric McIlvaney, um, Howie Sanborn, Jamie Brown, um, we all, um, competed at the, at the, for, for, in the sprint triathlon. And, um, man, that, that was, a that was a fun and unique experience. Um, you know, I mean, getting to, getting to ride around that, that track. Um, so we got a, we got a tiny bit of a, we got like a two minute head start on the, on the age groupers. Um, and, uh, but obviously the, the ridiculously fast age groupers, um, caught, um, you know, caught us on the, on the swim. But then once we got on the, park, it was a, it was a ton of fun just to, uh, to open it up. And at least for the first lap, I think, uh, my guide and I averaged like, I think we averaged 28, 29 miles an hour, just whipping around that, uh, that tr- solid. And then, uh, <laughs> it was, it, it was really awesome. And then, uh, but, uh, but, but by, <laughs> by the time the second and third lap, uh, came around, um, you know, the, the age groupers were starting to get, it was starting to get a little crowded. So we were having to slalom through <laughs> some age groupers and, uh, yeah. trying to ride up on the bank to, uh, to get around some people. And, uh, it, man, it was, uh, it was a, it was a wild day, but it was a ton of fun. And then getting to run on the, uh, getting to run on the track as well. Um, it was a, it was a fast, it was a fast 5k. That's, that's for sure. Um, so it was, it was fun. So it's it was funny. A, yeah. It's just like listening to you talk about that. I'm like, wow, it's like the first race report I've heard in like a year. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, man. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm really fortunate that, um, this was actually my, I got to race, um, two other times this year. So, yeah. um, I raced, I raced, uh, in February at, um, the, uh, at Triton man, which is a, a little sprint triathlon in uh, San Diego that, that raises money for, um, the, the university of California, San Diego, uh, triathlon team. Nice. Uh, so I, I, so I got to race there in February and then, um, and then in September, um, I, I got, the chance to race at a, uh, at a small local sprint in, uh, Loveland, Colorado, uh, called, um, last call triathlon. So it was the, I think it was, it was one of only two, tri- name. two triathlons that, uh, the state of Colorado was able to put on yeah. in 2020 and then, and then obviously getting the, getting the chance to, to go to Daytona and, and race there was, was a, was a blast. That'd be cool. Uh, check in the comments. Hey, Warrior, nice to see you. If anyone else has any comments for uh, Kyle, feel free to put them in the chat. Otherwise, he and I are just going to keep chatting and nerding out about triathlon, and that's totally fine. Uh, <laughs> I have a bunch of questions. Uh, just, I, I want to cover the gamut because, so quick overview for people who don't know. You raced at Daytona, so I uh, want to talk a little bit more about that. I want to talk about like what it's like to race as a blind triathlete. Uh, I'm curious about your experience, like as a blind triathlete and then as your experience, like racing on the pro level, because that's obviously an area that I don't know anything about. I think that's really interesting. Uh, you've been in a wind tunnel, which is something that most people have not been able to do. And I want to know about that. Uh, 
like you've done a lot of cool stuff that I think people would be really interested in. Like there's a lot to unpack there. Um, I guess why don't we just start with here's what I want let, to let's just talk about like I guess let's use Daytona you can use Daytona as an example but I guess speaking broadly so like racing as a blind triathlete walk me through and walk us through what it's like like swim bike run doing that sport not being able to see because <laughs> sure. I feel like that would be hard that's just my I guess mean, I mean let, let's 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 put it this way um so I got into triathlon almost six years ago now. Yeah. Uh, so I think I did my first race in April of 2015. And the, the guy that got me into triathlon, um, his name's Mike Melton. Um, you, you know, he, at the time he was, he had done like, I think he had done nine Ironmans. He, he had just okay. done, he had just done Kona. Um, so, so really, you know, really solid triathlete. Um, and, we had started running together and, um, and he was like, Kyle, I, I think you could actually, I think you'd enjoy triathlon. I, I think you'd uh, really get into it. Um, but I mean, neither of us had any idea what we were doing. Um, yeah. we, I mean, we could obviously, I mean, we Googled, we YouTubed anything and everything, um, about the sport of, of visually impaired triathlon or, you know, blind and visually impaired triathlon, but it was, you know, we really, we honestly just kind of made it up as we went along. Right. <laughs> so, um, so, but eventually, uh, so the, the strategies that I now use, um, you know, we built off of, off of that. And we just, I mean, we honestly just went out and, you know, tested a bunch of stuff out. We were like, oh, this worked, this didn't, um, yeah. for, for the swim. Um, so the, the strategies that I use now, um, so for the swim, um, I use, uh, what is called a swim tether. And basically it's just a, a piece of bungee cord. I ordered a, I ordered this, this thin piece of bungee cord from, from Amazon, um, cut it to a certain length. So, um, at the, at the world triathlon level, um, for, for professional racing, we, um, our, our, our swim tether length can actually not be longer, um, than 80 centimeters, um, from, person to from guide to athlete okay um, so i cut it so that the uh so and then what we do is we wrap the um we wrap the bungee cord uh, so we tied a little loop in the bungee cord and, and that slips on over my left thigh and i you know i basically cinch it all the way up into you know like right at the top of my quad like i mean it's it's yeah. you know, hugging in my crotch basically um and then um, 80 centimeters to my left is my guide. And he has the same thing where it's it, the, the loop is, you know, wedged up into, you know, in, into the, the into crease. His right? In, onto his, into his right thigh. So yeah. on his right thigh. So I, I swim on my guides. Um, yeah, I swim on my guides right. So sorry, I had okay. to. No, you're good. To, yeah, yeah. No. Um, and, the reason I, and the reason I do that, um, so you, I mean, what side you swim and, and run on is totally that's you know blind person preference um so i tend to when i'm swimming i tend to pull to my right a little bit okay. um so <laughs> i uh, so we, we we strategize that okay if my guide swims on my left then that'll maybe correct me a little bit more toward my left sure uh, i'll feel the tug of the tether and um I won't be clobbering my guide, you know, with every single stroke as, you know, so that I'm not swimming to my right and pushing him <laughs> over. So, you know, yeah. that's, that's so happened. Are you, are you swimming? Like, are you drafting off your guide or are you swimming like side by side? For the most part, we swim side by side. Um, okay. it, it's, it's pretty much side by side. Um, there are some, excuse me, there are some athletes that have been able to, if you can, um, uh, so, so I'm totally blind. So I have a hard time find, you know, looking to see where my guide is, but yeah. um, some, some of your, uh, some, some other visually impaired athletes um, um, can see a little bit. And so they, they can just see enough to um, kind of tuck into their, their guides draft. And they, you know, they kind of draft off their, just off their hip or just off their shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, 
but and I guess with that tether limit too, there's only so much you can do. Right. Right. Yeah. And there, there really is only so much you can only so much you can do. Um, but, but typically, um, yeah, we just, we just swim side by side. We try to keep our heads pretty level. Um, and I just try to, and then we try to get on the feet of, um, some faster swimmers. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and there's, there's, you know, swim strategy and stuff like, you know, try to stick me between, you know, two swimmers so that I'm, I'm getting a draft off of, off of both people or, or something like that. So there's a whole bunch of, um, strategy and stuff that can go into, into that. Um, cool. but, but yeah, so, uh, we, uh, and then for the, for the turns on the swim, um, we've developed this little tapping system where my guide, um, so my guides are, are <laughs> very fast, are very fast swimmers. Um, I kind of figured they'd have to be like, yeah, like, cause you probably uh, don't want someone just a little faster than you. Right. No, no, no. Especially, you know, I mean, you want to try and find a guide that is as strong as, as possible. Um, yeah. my, my, the, the rule of thumb that I generally use is whatever paces I want to hold for, um, a sprint. So a 750 meter swim, 20 K bike, uh, 5 K run. <clears throat> I generally look at, um, Olympic distance in 70.3 times. Um, okay. and that's kind of what, um, I go, that's kind of a baseline. It's like, you know, if my guy can hold the paces that I want to hold for a sprint in a Olympic distance or 70.3, then they're probably strong enough. Then you're solid. Yeah. Um, so like my, my, uh, my primary race guide, Zach Goodman, um, you know, he swims a 750 meter open water swim in like eight minutes and 30 seconds. So he's solid, <laughs> solid. He, He's, he's ridiculously yeah, fat. Yeah, not uh, a slow swimmer. No, no. Um, and, and like, you know, he did Kona in, in 2019 and, you know, no wetsuit. I don't think he, he had had a bad yeah. bike crash like a, a month before. Didn't swim at all leading into, into Kona and uh, I think swam like 52 or 53 minutes or something like that. So Jeez. really, so, I, mean, the, I mean, so like, you know, this guy, he, you know, he can swim one ar- with one arm as fast as I can swim with, with two arms and two legs. So is that um, how you do your tapping basically then? Yeah. So, so he, so he'll, he'll side stroke, um, as we get to a buoy and he'll, you know, say if, if it's going to be a left turn, um, he'll tap my left shoulder. Um, and he'll, he'll do like <laughs> tap my left shoulder. If it's, if it's going to be a right turn, um, he'll reach over cause he's got ridiculously long arms too. <laughs> um, I'm trying to visualize like, him side stroking, you swimming, pulling like a yep. one twenty pace, just like reaching back. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's that's pretty much what we do, man. Um, that's yeah, wild. He'll, he'll, he'll double tap my right shoulder, uh, but yeah, no, I mean we 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 look at the the course maps. We look at you know when we when we get yeah. to a race course, we look at where the buoys are positioned, and and we talk through it as well. Like, and you probably have an idea of like, okay, we've been swimming for six minutes. There's probably a turn. In general, whatever, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I so I generally, um, so I, I generally count my strokes. I know that it's about, you know, I know yeah. where it's, you know, it's roughly X strokes for you know two hundred meters um, yeah. to to the first turn buoy. Got right, it. Or something like that. And and Zach will, you know, he'll he'll trace the the outline of the swim on on my palm. So uh, he's like, we start here, cool. um, go along, and then we have a right, you know, a, a ninety degree right turn, go along, have a slight left. And then a hard, um, probably 120 degree right hand turn as we come back toward the shore or something like that. So yeah, uh, so you know, so we do we do that as well. And then um, I basically swim until I I feel uh, I feel the (laughs) the bottom and I'm grabbing (laughs) I'm grabbing on and uh, pop up. Zach, um, you know, he'll 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 jump up, rip. He uh, actually rips the tether off of himself, jumps around to my right hand side because I actually run better with my guide on my right and then we run up out of uh out of the water um i've got the i'm usually holding the you know you know sometimes zach is holding the the tether in his left hand and it's it's still hooked onto my hooked onto my thigh but it doesn't it doesn't trip me up at all yeah Uh, and then you know just as anyone else um does rip the the cap and goggles off rip the wetsuit down to around your waist and then run as fast as you can to uh uh, to your bike and you know finish uh stripping the wetsuit and then uh you know grab the 
put the helmet, sunglasses, uh, shoes on, you know, yeah. grab the bike, run out, uh, clip in and go. Um, and then, so I actually, so for the bike, I ride a, uh, I have a custom built, um, time trial tandem. Um, so, and that is, uh, you know, just, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, a uh, it's quite the machine. It's a beast. Uh, yeah. It, it's, it's a, it's a beast. If you guys want to check out photos of it, just, you know, find me on Instagram and, you know, we got, we got photos of it plastered all over. It's a, it, it's, it's a, a cool bike. It's, it's a cool bike. Uh, Tell you what, here's what I want to do just cause it's, it's 627 and I've got so much that I want to get through. Um, yeah. I have a question and, or this question from the comments that I want to ask. And this, I think is actually going to transition well to the bike because it's about nutrition. So, uh, obviously on Ironman bike nutrition is sort of where it's at, but it's a really interesting question. So, uh, how do you manage your nutrition in each phase, given the individual demands and or needs? And then I also want to expand on that a little bit and say, um, cause you're, maybe it's not you, but like, there's two people that are having to manage nutrition here as well. Totally. Yeah, totally. Um, so, you know, for, for, for a sprint triathlon, um, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, take a gel, you know, take a gel right before the, uh, right before the swim, yeah. um, me, we're out of the, you know, we're out of the water in anywhere from 11 to 12, you know, about 12 minutes, roughly, um, you know, in, in general. Um, and then on the bike, um, there are some athletes that'll, that'll have a gel on the bike and they'll, they'll take the gel, um, like two thirds of the way through the bike. Um, I generally, I pack my bottle with about three to 400 calories, um, on the bike and, and, that usually, and that usually gets me through, um, the bike and the run. Um, so, you know, whatever, uh, product I'm using, whether that's, you know, Gatorade endurance or, or infinite, or, um, you know, base performance or, or, or whatever, right. <laughs> whatever I'm using at, at that time. Um, I just pack my bottle with about, you know, minimum of about 300 calories, um, on the bike. And then I, uh, I usually, um, try to, I try to drain and, and finish the bottle. I usually use about a 16, about a 20 ounce bottle. Um, and I try to drink as much or most of that on the bike. And that's going to be, uh, so that's through, I mean, kicking up to almost 400 calories an hour there that's pretty high yeah yeah, yeah. well i mean that i mean it probably probably bleeds over from my uh probably bleeds over from my iron man yeah days. that's about what i would you know i would try to consume about 300 calories an hour it's just uh, a sport about eating wrapped up with a little bit of running <laughs> pretty much especially <laughs> the bike oh yeah oh yeah no for, for sure um but yeah, no, I just try to, I try to consume that, um, um, you know, that bottle on the bike yeah. and, uh, get to the run. Um, and you know, when you're running a 5k and you know, 19, you know, 18 to 19 minutes, um, you really don't have time to, to focus on, you know, grabbing nutrition or anything like that. I mean, you're done in you know, 18, yeah. 19 minutes. So, um, so that, you know, so the, so as long as you're planning, um, accordingly and you, and you fueled well with, you know, with a solid, you know, meal a couple of hours before, um, or all that. Um, so what I usually do on the run is I just grab, I just grab water and I, um, I, 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 <laughs> I heat up very quickly. Uh, okay. so I generally just splash water basically into my face and just get a little bit, you know, try to get a little bit of water into my mouth. Um, but mostly the water is, is used to try and cool me down. Yeah. Um, and then you know, I try to worry about, you know, hydration, <laughs> getting yeah. rehydrated after, um, after the race, but for, but for iron, but you know, but you know, when I was, you know, was, when I was competing in Ironman, um, definitely focused, um, very heavily on the nutrition. And, um, I raced, I would race with, uh, uh with a Garmin, um, watch. And I just set a, uh, I set a nutrition alarm, um, for yeah. every minutes just to remind myself to eat and drink. Um, so it was just, yeah. uh, you know, take a, you know, pack the, pack the bottles with, you know, a couple hundred calories. And then every 30 minutes, take a gel every hour to, um, grab a bar out of the, uh, out of the bento box. Um, and then every 15 minutes be, uh, be taking a, a gulp or two of, uh, of fluid. So, mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that was, a 
it was a big deal, especially when you're on the bike for, you know, five, you know, five plus hours, it's, uh, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta fuel up. Cause you know, when you get to, uh, when you get to the run, um, man, it's, you know, it's hard to eat. It's, it's hard to eat. And, you know, you know, I know you've, I know if you've experienced this and, and a lot of, a lot of people have also experienced it, you know, trying to, trying to run a, a marathon and, and eat and, you know, having food jostling around <laughs> in your stomach, not, not easy, not easy, man. It, it no, really it sucks. Yeah. You actually, you, you answered a follow-up question that somebody asked, or that the same person asked, uh, thanks yeah. for asking by the way, uh, which was, uh, so no solids, just liquid carbs. So liquid carbs on sprint, a little bit of solid and long course. Pretty much. Yeah. And yeah. I, I mean, that, that's what I do. Um, everybody's different. Um, yeah. so, you know, you know, I, you know, th those are the, those are the things that have worked for me. Um, you know, just cause I, I have a, you know, I, I don't like to carry around and, and, you know, have all that stuff jostling around in, in my stomach, especially when I'm trying to, to run, you know, to run fast, yep. uh, you know, you know, GI distress is a, is a, is a big thing, especially when it, when it comes to, when it comes to long course. Yeah. Um, it's probably so, one of the easiest, uh, I mean, like, you know, you've got your fitness, like your fitness doesn't go away over, over two days or whatever, if you're properly okay. prepared, but oh, like, yeah. GI distress will wreck your race like harder than almost almost anything that I can think of offhand. Oh, absolutely! No, I mean it's it's not fun. Nope. <laughs> no, when it when it hits you. So. Yeah, that's that's a great point too. About actually, you kind of illustrated a really interesting thing. Is like I see a lot of people on sprints like they'll eat like granola bars on the bike. Like age groupers on will eat granola bars on the bike and. I understand the desire, but it's like, that's not even digesting until after the race. Like, no, yeah. Cause it, it take, it takes quite a while. It takes yeah. a lot to digest, um, a solid than, than you might think. And, you know, and when we're doing, yep. when we're doing, a you know, at the, at the, the world track at the para triathlon world triathlon level, you know, we're, we're racing and our races are, you know, 55, you know, 55 minutes to an hour, um, yeah. maybe an hour maybe an hour and five minutes if you're on a hilly course. Um, and you know, the, the, what we need to, what, what we need to focus on it is going, is going super fast. Um, right. and, and what we're trying to do is we're just trying to, you know, glucose, glucose is a beautiful thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so even so, <laughs> and, 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 and you've probably seen this, but they've done studies before where, um, you get, you know, sprint triathletes and, and, you know, athletes that, that, you know, do shorter, um, distance racing, um, they get us a, a very similar mental boost if they just like slosh yeah. you know, around in their mouth and they don't swallow it. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, you can slosh it around in your mouth, spit it out and you still can run a, you know, there, there are people that still run ridiculously fast times. So it, it's yeah. totally, it's totally possible. Um, but then again, you know, I, I you know, I, you know, I, one of the, uh, one of the able-bodied, um, <laughs> um, uh, world triathlon athletes, you know, heard what I heard, what I did. And he was like, dude, like I take two gels in a sprint. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> come on. But you know, who, I mean, it, it's nutrition. Mm -hmm. So it is so personal to everybody. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I, you know, I, 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 we competed a level where, you know, we're working with, you know, top-notch coaches and dietitians and um you know and, and it's also a lot of trial and error i've now been a triathlete right. for five six years and you know you, f you find out what works what doesn't work you test stuff in um you test stuff in training you, you know you test stuff in in you know tune-up races and all that and then um you know in the, in the races that matter you, you go to what works yeah so just to real quick unpack something Kyle just said for everybody, just in case they missed it or maybe they weren't aware of what you're talking about because it's a really cool thing. So your body needs fuel or needs fuel and needs sugar to run, obviously. But like to expand on what he said about like you can swish sugar in your mouth. Like there's studies that have been done. Like you can be running and and you're not like you have not run out of sugar, but you just drink sugar water, hold it in your mouth, spit it out. Like obviously nothing was absorbed, but like the the brain essentially understands or thinks that there's sugar coming in and it says like okay we can do more work like there's so much potential that's basically just like limited because your brain thinks you don't have sugar like yep. it's 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 
pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it's all it's all about all 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 elite racing is and all elite sport is basically is tricking your brain that you can that it you know that your body is not dying and you know yeah. that you know you're just you're we're basically just playing mind games with ourselves and we're tricking ourselves to go a whole lot faster because <laughs> i don't know uh we have a couple of comments i want to get to uh, actually real quick hi matt thanks for joining uh matt says i feel like that's a solid nutrition plan i love solid food if i'm going longer uh Matt does, he, he does Ironman distance as well. Um, Warrior says, I think I need to find something other than cliff bars. Uh, <laughs> you know, the weird thing, Kyle, I'm curious how you define a bonk because I have always, well, let me, let me just tell you how I define it because I've always heard of this term to mean one very specific thing, but I've recently learned that a lot of people use this term to mean a lot of things. So my impression of a bonk is like literal glycogen depletion. Like you have no more actual energy. Yep. And I would say that I've only ever truly bonked like, ah, uh, man, a couple of times, like two or three times in like 10 or 12 or whatever years of cycling. But I know that a lot of people use bonk to mean like, oh, I just, you know, I, I quote unquote, I air quotes ran out of energy or like, I felt like crap or, you know, and the reason I, the reason I bring that up is because what you said, like tricking your body to like, you know, convince yourself that you're not dying. Like, unless well, that was a long lead up to say that unless you've ever really bonked, which I don't feel like most just amateurs have, because you have to push yourself pretty hard. Like, unless you've ever truly bonked, like, I don't think people have experienced what it feels like to like not be able to walk up a hill. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it it's not bad. Yeah. It's, it's not fun. Um, you know, I, I mean, the, 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 yeah, the, the textbook definition of bonk is total glycogen depletion, loss of energy, you know, all, all, you know, everything you said, yeah. um, uh, what I, what I typically, when, when I, when I say that I, I bonk or, you know, cause, or, um, I think what a lot of people say when they bonk is, you know, you just, you've hit a wall, yeah. um, you hit a wall, whether that, and, and that usually is some combination of, of both, um, energy depletion, um, fatigue, you know, mental fatigue, mm -hmm. uh, muscular fatigue, you know, all, all of that. And, and it's, and you've, you've hit a wall. Um, and, and there are some times when like, you know, you hit that wall and, you know, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. It, you know, right. it's like, I've, I've eaten 250 calories an hour. I've eaten 250 calories an hour. You know, I've stuck to this nutrition plan, but like, I can't fit any more food in me. Like my stomach is full, Yeah, uh, you know, or, or something like that. Um, I have experienced total glycogen depletion probably once uh, on a training day. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, sucks. yeah, I, I was, uh, I, I was in, I was actually in, I was in Boulder, um, uh, you know, visiting, uh, visiting someone and just, uh, and just training. And, um, you know, we were, we were tuning up, getting ready for, uh, getting ready for a 70.3, um, in a couple of, in a few weeks or months or something like that. And, uh, I was a, I was an idiot and, you know, hadn't eaten in a long time. And I went and did a, a really hard swim and I was sitting on the, you know, sitting on the, uh, the edge of the hot tub. And I mean, literally passed out, fell backwards. Um, wow. I didn't, you know, didn't crack my head open or anything. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my buddy was, you know, slapped my face, came around, stood up, made it halfway to the locker room and just totally collapsed again. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not, it's not fun at all. No. Uh, and I, I could not imagine trying to, to, to race like that. Um, wow. In my, in my first Ironman in, in Boulder 2016, um, I don't think I was glycogen depleted because um, I, I, I had a, a solid, a decent nutrition plan for the bike. And um, I just wasn't, I just wasn't fit. And I hit a, <laughs> I wasn't extremely fit and I, and I hit a wall and I, uh, yeah. I, I think I, able to, I ran the first mile of the marathon, walked the next 25 miles and ran the finisher shoot. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, Cause, I, I cause mean, that's a real thing too. It might not be a bonk, but that's a thing. Like you can run out of, you might not be out of energy, but you can, or sorry, you might not be out of glycogen, but you can run out of energy. <laughs> totally. I mean, whether, I mean, whether that's mental or physical or anything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I mean, it's, it's, it's not fun e either, either when, whether no. you're glycogen you know, totally glycogen tapped out or, um, or, or mentally fatigued or anything like that. Somebody comments, uh, warrior. Yeah. Comments bonking who they bonked once. If you've never been there before, absolutely scary. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, yeah, I remember the, the first time I did it, I was, it was at the end of a long ride. I was just getting into biking. Like, you know how everybody has that thing. They were, well, so many things you're bad at when you start. Mine was nutrition. I was that person who's like, oh yeah, one cliff bar is definitely good enough for 80 miles on the bike. Like, oh, man. yeah, I, I was just, I just didn't know what I was doing. Cause I didn't have any mentors or anything. And I remember I got home or I got within like a mile and a half of home. Thankfully, that's just where I was. And I remember just, I was trying to get over these. It's not even fair to call them rollers in the road, like bumps, <laughs> right? Like yep, yep. four feet of elevation. And I was just like, well, this is just where it ends. I was like, I just, I can't get up. Like, yeah, for people oh, yeah. who've never experienced it, it's not just like you're, you're tired. It's like your body's just like, nope, we're done. Like there's just nothing left. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, you know, you know, I, I, I always say plan your race, race, your plan, you know, plan your training, you know, train your plan, you know, all, all that. And that include and that includes nutrition and, and it, and it's not just, you know, having, you know, gels and, and cliff bars or cliff blocks or, um, you know, bananas or rice cakes or whatever you do on the, it's on the, on the bike or on the run or whatever. Um, it, it's, it's a very, you know, you have to focus on, on the nutrition outside of that. Um, mm -hmm. because if you go in depleted, then you're, you're not going to recover it Yeah. You know, during, during the workout. So, so my, you know, my, our nutritionist that works with us, um, has really done a great job in helping, um, in helping me realize that, and, um, you know, now, now I try to, I, I try to eat a lot more, uh, a lot more balanced and, um, you know, and I, and I do consume, you know, cal, you know, I do consume, um, quite a bit of calories and stuff on yeah. you know, when, I, when I'm training and, and all that, um, because, you know, we're, <laughs> when you're trained 20 to 25 hours a week, um, you know, it's, it's a lot, you know, you're, you're asking a lot of your body and you, you need to keep it. You need to keep the body happy um, because there's a lot more important, you know, there's a lot more important long-term ramifications <laughs> if you're, yeah. uh, if you're not fueling it correctly. Yeah. Um, tell you what, I want to shift gears just a little bit. And yep. I have a, a quick story about biking and, and then I want to hear, I'm much more interested in yours. Um, <laughs> so, so I have piloted once uh, okay. a totally blind athlete. And, uh, if anyone's ever done it, I mean, I'm going to say that most people probably haven't ridden a tandem just in general. Tandem riding is much different than a road bike. Like you can <laughs> feel the weight of that other person for sure. And then piloting someone who's either visually impaired or totally blind. I mean, one on my end, it was terrifying. Like, I think I have very good bike handling skills, right? But man terrifying but i think the biggest part for me initially was i was like there's this person behind me mm -hmm. she can't see anything and she has total faith in me to to not crash the bike to keep her safe to to give her cues to do everything like there was so much responsibility and i was so scared and the the thing that i remember the most was she was so calm and it was so it was such a weird realization to me because I was like, it, I kind of had to come out of myself for a little bit. Cause I was like, as terrified as I am right now, if I was in her position, I'd be losing my mind. Cause like, <laughs> can't see, don't know this person, have no idea how good they are on a bike. Like how she had no control over the situation essentially. Right. Like that's, so I really want to hear what it's like. And I'm going to, you know, your, your guide is great. I'm also going to tell people just in case they don't know, like 
Andy Potts has guided you, Alan Greening, uh, who most people probably don't know that name, but he's also quite fast, I mean, quite fast as an age grouper. Um, so like you've had some really good, really good pilots, but like, tell us what it's like to be going 30 miles an hour around like Daytona banked, you know, like what, walk us through that. Cause I'm going to guess most people cannot envision that at all. <laughs> um, I love it. I mean, I, I mean, I, so I, I've been, I've been riding tandem bikes since I was seven years old. So I, I, I you know, you know, for, I, I lost my sight when I was, when I was six. And one of my favorite things to do, um, was, was ride my bike. And, um, you know, my, uh, my dad, um, you know, found a, we, we found a tandem bike at a, at a bike store in, uh, in Jacksonville, Florida, where we were living at the time. And, um, you know, we started, we started riding together and, um, you know, just rode this, you know, this little, this, like, we called it a mountain bike tandem. It was not a, it was not a mountain bike, <laughs> but it had, yeah. know, it had not, it had knobby tires. And that's all I knew that, that, you know, what mountain bikes had were that's like, a mountain bike. <laughs> so yeah. I, I called it a mountain bike. Um, you know, and a couple of my, you know, a couple of my friends once, uh, you know, you know, once, uh, they, they got a little bit bigger, um, you know, my dad, uh, my dad let them pilot me and, eventually, you know, my dad was a, my dad loved cycling, um, you know, just in general. So eventually we, uh, we got a road bike, uh, a ro an, an actual road tandem. And, um, so, so I, you know, I had ridden a lot, um, yeah. by the time I started triathlon. Um, so, you know, now I've been, I've been riding on the back of a tandem for 21, 22 years now. Uh, so, I mean, so there is a level of confidence that I have on the back of a tandem that, that a lot of people just, they don't. Um, yeah. and so, <laughs> but to, to, you know, but what you experienced is, is not uncommon. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. so you know, in, 2015, in 2015, my buddy, Mike, you know, he, you know, he's, you know, he had done, you know, at that time, nine Ironmans, um, you know, been in the, been in the TT bars for, for hours at a time, right. uh, you know, had, had ridden, had ridden up to Javi in those wicked crosswinds. Um, yeah. Did uh, did did Ironman Saint George uh, um, one of the years that it that it was around, and so and, and you know Coeur d'Alene and all these all these you know tough Ironmans. Um, you know spent you know ridden tens of thousands of miles on, on his on his own bike, and uh, you know we got on the tandem for the first time together, and, <laughs> and he's just. He's hanging, he's, he's white knuckle death gripping it. Yep. And, but I mean, he's going, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's scary and it's nerve wracking. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, but, but yeah, no, but um, when, so you really have to, um, you have to develop a, a level of trust between, um, you know, the, the, the guy, you know, the pilot or the captain and the, and the, the stoker. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, uh, just, but my, my rule of thumb. Um, so if, if we're going to call the, if we're going to call the person on the front of the bike, the pilot, uh, the person in the back is the stoker. Um, okay. however, sometimes, um, people refer to the pilot as the captain. Um, so what I, what, what I, uh, jokingly say is that, well, if they're the captain, I'm the rear admiral. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so but, uh, but yeah, no, so I recognize that, you know, I mean, I recognize that, you know, I mean, you're basically trying to race, uh, you know, you're trying to race, a, you know, driving, you know, steering a tandem bike. Um, it's a lot like, you know, if you're going from, you know, a little Honda Civic to uh, a Mack truck, you know, yeah. it, 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 you know, it handles differently, you know, everything still works the same. Um, but it all, it's just, a, it's a, it's a little different. Um, mm -hmm. and it, it takes some, uh, it takes some getting used to. Um, so you mentioned one of my, one of my guys, Alan Greening, um, who, uh, who guided me for Ironman Arizona in 2018 when I, when we went sub 11 hours, um, you know, his first time on the, on the tandem, he was, he was pretty terrified. <laughs> um, but, uh, I don't know how you couldn't be, honestly, it, yeah. it, it's a cool experience. And like, once you settle in and once you sort of get a few hours into it, like it yeah. starts to make a little yeah. more sense, but it's different. Sure. 
yeah so i i um i tell like i tell all of my um all of my new guides like look it's a lot like mountain biking um so so think about like when you're when you're mountain biking you want to have a super relaxed upper body um you know just just treat it like you know so a lot you know mountain biking or um cyclocross or, or something along those lines so a lot of those skills are actually um, very applicable um to um piloting a tandem okay. uh, so so it's um you know you just you got to look you got to you got to anticipate earlier um and then yeah you know, the, i mean obviously the experience of the of the stoker um comes into play as well so you know i'm i'm a lot more comfortable you know pointing my you know pointing my knee pointing my elbow sure. um you know, leaning you know leaning with the bike you know because I, I i i trust you know i trust the physics um and and, and look i've crashed i mean i've crashed before yeah <laughs> um, it happens. and that's not and that's not fun and you know you know your confidence is, is shaken after that but um but you know i mean it's you you get back up and you and you do it again and again but um so you know, I mean, I, I mean, I love going fast. I love whipping around that, that track at Daytona, but I, I love, I also love the, I love Hills. Um, I love climbing on a tandem, even though it's, you know, climbing on a tandem is, uh, is pretty hard. <laughs> it's yes. a lot harder than, uh, than you would think, you know, uh, a lot of people are like, ah, oh, you got two people. That's twice the power. But then we also got twice the weight. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> a lot less it sounds mobility. basic, but it doesn't. And, and then going eight miles an hour on a tandem, they forget yeah. that one too. Yep. Yeah. No, it's a lot, it's a lot more maneuverability. You got two people moving around. Um, and then, you know, if you throw in standing into it, there, there's so much that, you know, that, that has to go right. So you have to be in sync with each other. Um, and so, so a lot of, a lot of stuff that, um, a lot of stuff that, that I do is, is focused on, you know, I have to build, I have to build a really strong rapport with, um, with my guides. So like, you know, I mean, so one of the things, so, uh, you know, when, uh, when Alan and I were, um, were training together and, you know, getting ready to race together, I mean, you know, we had to, we had to build some rapport. So, I mean, what do you do with, a um, you know, with a, with a Scott, you know, with a Scottish dude, but you, you know, go and drink scotch and beer and whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that was, you know, that was rapport yep. build for yeah. us. Um, you know, with, uh, you know, when, um, you know, when, you know, my, uh, when I was getting ready to, uh, train a race with, uh, my, my current primary race guide, Zach Goodman. Um, you know, he and I are close to the, you know, close to the same age. Um, we like a lot of stuff. Um, you know, we, you know, we, we hang out and like, we became, you know, good friends and, um, you know, we just spent a lot of time, you know, you spend a lot of time with each other. Um, you develop a, a certain trust yeah. uh, with, you know, with each other and, uh, um, I think, uh, Andy, Andy Potts guided me, uh, at the, the last call triathlon back in September, um, this year. And, you know, I think we had been on the, the bike like three times together <laughs> when we yeah. raced, so that was a, that was a different experience. Um, you know, so, but, uh, but yeah, no, you just, you, you build rapport and you try to find people that, that mesh with your personality and that, that aren't afraid to, um, you know, to crack the whip when, uh, when you need to work harder. Um, but right. also aren't afraid to tell you, Hey, you need to ease off. Cause you're not going to be a, your, your legs aren't going to be, um, fresh enough for the run. I mean, cause you can't yeah. overbike in a, even in a sprint. So, um, so just Definitely. developing that, that rapport and, um, but, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a ton of fun and you just gotta, you gotta trust, you know, it is a, it is a level of trust, but it's, a um, I, I tell people all the time, the, uh, blind division pair triathlon is not an individual sport. You know, a lot of, a lot of the focus is placed on, on mm -hmm. us blind athletes, but I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's really the only true team sport in, in triathlon. Um, yep. yeah, we, we can call the, the mixed team relay that, that they're coming out with, that they're going to now compete in, um, in the Olympics, a, a team sport. And yeah, it is. Um, but you know, my, my guide directly affects me and I directly affect my guide. Um, you know, because as, as you experienced, um, when, you know, when piloting a tandem, um, the stress level goes way up <laughs> <That's unreal. laughs> compared, compared yeah. to when you're on, when you're on your own bike. Um, so it, like, it's nothing in comparison. Yeah. You have to take that into account as well. Um, so that, you know, 
So like anything that I do directly affects them, what they do directly affects me. So we all have to maintain, you know, calm, composed demeanors and, and you know, we have to know the, the, the things that make each other tick, um, the things that motivate each other. Um, so it's, it's a, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. I mean, and I, you know, I love, I love it. It's a, uh, it's a blast. Tell you what, I just want, I want to say one quick thing on that. And I've got a couple questions for you. And then we're getting close to seven, which I'm good to keep chatting for a while, but I want to respect your time and make sure I know it's later there for you than it is here. Uh, it's all good, man. We can, we can, we can go a little bit longer. I don't mind. Okay, cool. Um, quick note on that. Uh, Kyle peace and Brent, like I've heard Ky both of them independently say so many times, like, you know, it doesn't work without the other one. And like, Kyle knows how to motivate Brent. Brent knows how to motivate Kyle. And it like that partnership is direct for sure. Uh, a couple questions for you. So one, uh, did you say you're 20, 25 hours per, we're going back a little bit. It took me, I, I kind of, it took me a little bit to get to these questions. Uh, did you say 25 hours per week? Are you at that time per week now, or is it less in the off season or sorry, or is it less because are you in the off season? Essentially, that's I think what he's asking. Uh, okay. Um, I am not current, you know, 25 hours a week is when I'm at my, is when I'm at my peak. Um, so like right now I'm in, right now I'm in the off season. So I'm probably doing 14 to, to 18 hours a week. Um, and Which that's is, mostly. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, it's all, it's all good. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably doing like 14 to 18 hours a week. Um, and, but most of that is just, I mean, that's getting on the trainer and spinning pretty easy for an hour and a half and then going out sure. for, you know, 45 minute run or something like that, or, you know, swim, you know, swimming easy when I, when I have access to a pool. And, uh, and then I also throw in, um, I, you know, I, I consider, you know, strength training, um, you know, my core work and all, and, and all of that as well as part of my training volume. So, uh, but yeah, when I'm in the, when I'm in the, the, the peak of, uh, the season. So, um, like building into, um, building into an important race. Yeah. We'll, um, we'll probably peak at about 25 hours of total work in a week. Um, but we probably average, um, 17 to 20, um, the majority of the year. Yeah, I'm sitting here just like, okay, so your off season is like my peak. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is my, but this is, but you know, again, this is my, this is my job. Um, yeah, fair. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I get to, I get to, I get to play in a pool, play on a bike, and and you know, go for a run with friends. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> for, I would love to do for, that for for a living. And, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it's not, it's hard. <laughs> it's yeah. hard on my body. It's, it's hard on, um, it's hard on, you know, it, it's hard on, uh, you know, everybody, you know, everybody, um, yeah. around, around you. Cause you know, it's like, I got to prioritize training because if I don't train, I, um, I don't race well. Especially um, when it's your job. I mean, it's like, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. So I'm, I'm curious to hear your answer for this, but I mean, you know, in, in my life, obviously training is not my job. Um, mm -hmm. but I feel like if it was your job, I think you've got a little more, um, agency to sort of say like, no, like I have to prioritize this. Just like, I have to go to work. Like I can't just not go to work. For sure. No, I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, look, um, you know, so I'm actually, I'm currently at my, uh, at my parents' house, um, for the, you know, for the, the rest of December, you know, as my, nice a little off season. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, I still, you know, I, I, you know, I fit my training in, um, around the, the time that I spend with them. But, um, but you know, when I go back to the, the Olympic and Paralympic training center in January, um, I'm probably not going to see my family until, you know, after the, after the Paralympic games, yeah. um, you know, you know, I, my, my girlfriend, um, lives in, uh, Victoria, British Columbia. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, uh, so that's been, that's been rough on us. And yeah. she's, she's also, uh, she's also, um, uh, you know, she's also a paratriathlete and you oh, know, cool. can, she's going for her, for her fourth Paralympic games. And so, you know, we, we both have to prioritize our training and, um, you know, we do, we do the best we can to, you know, to, to talk to each other and, yeah. and, uh, and be, and be there for each other. But, um, but you know, when, when, 
you know, <laughs> when it's, when it's, uh, when it hits a certain time at night and we're in the middle of, uh, you know, training, like, you know, and I'm, I'm falling asleep on the, I'm falling asleep on, you know, while trying to talk to her on FaceTime or something. Uh-huh. Like that. She, she, she knows. And, you know, I know yes. that I know, I know this and I, and I do the same for her. Like we, we, we keep each other accountable, even though we live a couple thousand miles apart. Um, and, and, you know, so it, you know, so my, you know, my family keeps me accountable. I keep, I keep other people accountable. And, and so it's just, you know, you, you have to have a, a great support network in order to, to make this, you know, this profession <laughs> in, yeah. in air quotes, um, you know, to make it work. Um, yeah. it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a traditional, you know, you know, I, I do technically have a nine to five job because I train from, you know, seven to five, just about it, you know, every day when I'm in the, the peak season, right. but, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's different. So it's different. This is a, this is a really awesome question that I'm curious to hear your answer on, because I think we all answer it differently. Uh, how did you manage the psychological part after crashing? And they go on to say, when I crashed and started doing group writing again, I didn't want anyone near me. <laughs> I totally understand. So I'll go ahead and tell you the story of my worst, of my worst crash. Um, you know, I, I've, I've, I've obviously had a, um, so I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you my, the story of my worst crash. And then I'll, I'll tell you my most recent, um, my most recent crash. Sure. Uh, so my, my worst crash actually was in uh, 2018. Um, I was uh, a member of uh, team C to C, which was the, uh, it was a, it was an all, um, it was a four tandem bike relay team. Um, and we competed in race across America, which, um, you know, races from Oceanside, California to Annapolis, Maryland. And, um, uh, we were the first, uh, team, uh, with all blind or visually impaired stokers. So, you know, the person on the back of the tandem, um, to, co- to compete and finish race across America. Um, so we had gotten through the, the quote unquote hard part, you know, being, you know, Utah, you know, the hills of Utah and Colorado, and we had, we had made it to Kansas and, um, you know, for, for race across America, you're, you're racing 24 hours a day, you know, the entire time. Um, so it's like three, three thirty in the morning. We had just survived this insane hail and rainstorm and my, um, you know, it's, it's pretty dark, um, you know, three, three 30 in the morning. Um, and we come into this, this little town and, you know, the, the, the town lights kind of, you know, om, you know, basically almost blinded my, uh, my, my pilot. And, um, we hit a set of angled railroad tracks. So the, by the time he actually saw the railroad tracks, um, it was too late to, to square the, the bike up. Um, he was like, if I had been on my single, I could have easily, um, you know, maybe not easily. I, I could have at least jumped it, but yeah, you know, there, there's no, I mean, I mean, you hit, you hit a set of angled railroad tracks, um, on a tandem, you, you go down, right. uh, you know, we, we hit, and I mean, we were going probably 22, 23 miles an hour at the time. Um, so you, you, you hit and you go down hard. Um, so I went down pretty hard. I, I kind of landed half on my, my guide. Um, and I, uh, actually, um, my, my right elbow took the majority of the, uh, the impact, um, on the ground. And, um, I actually, um, um, went and got it x-rayed after we had finished the race. And, uh, I actually had a, uh, a, a fractured, um, radial head. So the, the, the part of my, uh, my radius where my radius meets my elbow, um, was, you know, which is a, a nice, a nice, uh, pretty fracture. Um, so I, I basically right. rode from Kansas to Maryland with, um, with a broken arm. So, but, uh, fortunately I didn't need, I didn't need a, a you know, two arms to, to at least pedal the bike. Um, but it, yeah, it hurt. Um, but I, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> I, had a lot, I had a lot of faith, I had a lot of faith in, 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 in Chris, um, my, my pilot for race across America. Um, he was probably the most experienced cyclist, um, on our race across America team. And, uh, you know, he, he would, he was just super calm and, and collected, you know, got up, we, you know, we 
checked, you know, apart from my elbow hurting a little bit, um, you know, we each had a little bit of road rash and, and we, we were just, we were just perfectly fine. Um, <laughs> and then my most, and then my most, uh, and then my most recent, um, oh, but, uh, but, uh, but in terms of the, the mental bouncing back from it, um, I still tense up when, um, whenever I go over railroad tracks, so sure. it doesn't fully go away. Um, but you just gotta, you, you gotta try and relax. And, you know, I, you know, I definitely, you know, try to breathe and, and relax. And, um, you know, I, I trust my, uh, I trust my guides. I trust my pilots that, you know, they're going to, to keep us upright. Um, yeah. and I, you know, I, you know, I do my best to maintain a smooth, even pedal stroke and cadence, um, keep myself centered on the bike. Um, don't move around, you know, I, I do everything I can, um, on my part to, to keep the bike upright. Um, yeah. but it, it's terrifying. Like the first few times I went over railroad tracks <laughs> after that, I was like, Oh God, can we stop <laughs> get off and walk over this or something yeah. like that? Um, and, um, I'll tell you then, real, real quick, uh, before you get to your second story, I just want to jump in and say that was me with the, the first, well, actually, I, I guess I'm lucky to say the only like bad, like properly bad crash I had was on gravel um yeah. just a little gravel segment and my road bikes i can only fit 23s and i just yeah. turned wrong gravel down wasn't wearing yep. gloves like tore open Ooh. both my yep. palms and like even oh, still fun. to this day like i just don't like riding gravel that much like i'll do it yeah. and like if i'm in a group and the group's going over gravel i'm like well obviously we can because they're all yeah. on the same tires i am but like totally understand the feeling of like can we just walk or like can we just not ride this section yep, yep. oh yeah no, it's, Hate it. it's scary it, it it stinks but then um <laughs> but then uh this was just a, 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 a this is just a funny little story i mean i'd like i'd barely call it a crash so uh good um, <laughs> andy, andy and I, andy potts and i were uh we were we were prepping for uh uh for the the last call triathlon back in september and I don't know. This was the this was the last time we were going to be able to ride the the bike before the before we actually drove up to Loveland and, and raced. And um, so we were like, well, we should probably practice um, like our dismount and stuff like that. Um, so you know, you know, and, and doing a doing a flying dismount on a on a tandem is a uh, is a little different. Let's just say. Um, yeah. So I, so, um, so you know, we uh, you know, we got you know, so we we practiced our our mount, we, uh, you know, we got the mount down pretty good. And then, um, you know, we were just like riding around the, the parking lot of the, um, a parking lot at the, at the training center. And, um, you know, uh, Andy, uh, gives me the, the command to, you know, get out of my, you know, get out of my shoes and I'm, you know, we're, we're going to get out of our, our shoes. And, um, I, I go to, you know, and then we're, we're getting ready to, to dismount and Andy's, uh, counting us down like three, two, and then we try to we try to dismount and uh, we don't quite get our legs over mm. the, the top tube and uh bike just you know totally tips over um oh, man. land you know you know land uh decently hard but you know it's like it, it, you're fine right <laughs> I mean, yeah but but and, i mean uh, you know poor andy he just he felt he felt really bad um but yeah but at that but at that point it's just like dude we're we got to practice this. This is, this is going to happen. Um, yeah. you know, you know it's, as a, as a blind person, I accept that I'm going to walk into some walls. I'm going to walk into some poles. I'm going to trip. I'm going to fall. Um, right. You know, at, you know, when you practice, you know, when you practice a flying, you know, when you try to practice the flying dismount, you're going to mess up. I mean, we've all seen, I mean, people everyone, crash. Everyone, everyone is, everyone has seen, the, the crazy YouTube videos that go viral about the, you know, the, yep. the screw up on the, you know, screw ups on the, the flying mounts and dismounts. I mean, it's a, it's a hard skill. Yeah. It's uh, hard for anyone. Yeah. So, I mean, let alone on a tandem. So, you know, it, it you know, but no, nah, I mean, so you can, you can laugh. You know, I mean, it, it, I mean, you know, so you just gotta, I mean, but like I said, I mean, getting over a crash is, is, you know, it takes time and you just gotta, you gotta be willing to, to keep putting yourself into this, into those situations and, and trust, um, trust yourself. You got to trust your, your handling skills, um, work on improving, 
your handling skills, um, just doing the little things that the simple things that'll, that'll help keep you safe. So, um, you know, like you know, always, you know, number one, always wear your helmet, <laughs> keep, you know, protect the noodle and, yep. uh, and, you know, just, uh, you know, just, you know, trust, you know, trust yourself, um, uh, you know, you know, learn, learn from, uh, more experienced cyclists and, uh, and triathletes. Um, yeah. don't ride a, uh, don't ride a TT bike in a, in a, in a group ride. <laughs> oh, the classic. Cyclists, you know, you yeah. Know, just little things like that. So, uh, but uh, no, it's, yeah, but it's, uh, you do what you can. So. Uh, Matt says, fantastic video. So cool to learn about you. Uh, last call for anyone in the chat. If anyone has any, uh, additional questions. Um, I just want to say you, you just touched on something that I found personally really valuable, which is, um, ride with experienced cyclists Pe like r riding with people who are better than you is just so valuable um one of the things that i i think i learned the most is like especially like descents and cornering like i yep. think we all have this idea of like you know there's a speed at which i can take this corner yep. like i can't take the corner any faster or whatever and then you're riding behind someone and they're just putting another like four miles an hour into this corner and yep. like now to be fair there is skill there so it's not like you can just drop another like, you can't just increase your speed by like you know 15 percent magic like you do have to increase your abilities as well but like when you witness someone do it and you're like okay it's possible like it, you know i think i'm at the limit but the limit's actually way further out there like <laughs> i've found that to be really valuable in like oh okay like i thought i was close but no like there's a lot more there for sure. No, it, it's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, you know, even putting, you know, different, you know, putting, putting people with different abilities on the front of a tandem also is, um, is fascinating. I got to ride with a, a tandem uh, national champion on the front of my, my bike one time. And, wow. and the way he moved the bike, um, what was fascinating, um, you know, when, you know, you know the way that, um, you know, the way that, you know, the, the ways that, you know, Zach and Andy, um, handle the, the bike are a little different. Um, I, right. you know, and then I've, uh, I've ridden with, uh, with another, um, former, former pro triathlete, um, Alex Libin, who, uh, um, oh, cool. he handled, he handles the bike, uh, just a little bit differently uh, than, than those guys. And so you learn to, you learn to adjust, um, you know, based on, on, uh, on a pilot's pedaling style, um, you know, a guy like Alex, who's a, who's a, you know, he's now like really into mountain biking. He loves taking downhills really fast and he, he, he's willing to be a little bit more aggressive, um, in cornering and, and, and stuff like that. Um, we, we tried chasing a Strava KOM, um, nice. uh, just out of Colorado Springs one time. And, uh, you know, the, the, the KOM was like 56 miles an hour going down, downhill. Uh, and, uh, we, we were, we had gotten up to speed and, uh, oh, well, we broke the chain. <laughs> so, Damn. Uh, so <laughs> we, we didn't, we didn't crash there. Um, but we, we were able to stay upright, but, um, but you know, I mean, when, when you're with, uh, when you're with someone who, um, you know, who's crashed a bunch or who has experience, you know, keeping a bike upright, um, it makes a difference. Um, you yeah. Know, and, you know, there, there've been several times when, when Zach and I have, you know, put out so much power that, you know, we'll, we'll flex the frame of the, of the tandem just, just enough where the, 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 one of the chains will, um, pop off, oh, yeah. uh, the chain ring and all of a sudden, like we're producing no power and we're going at, you know, 40 miles an hour, uh, right after and, dropping like 2000 Watts too. It, exactly. So, um, so it's, it's fascinating, but, um, and then just learning, um, you know, from experienced guys, like, you know, I mean, Andy Potts has been in the sport for almost 20 years now. Um, you know, learning from him, um, you know, has, has been fascinating. Um, you know, Zach, you know, Zach's been a triathlete maybe a little bit longer than I have. Um, but you know, he, he views things a little differently and, um, you know, has probably the most tandem experience, um, of anyone uh, well um of any one that i've, I've raced with yeah. <laughs> um and so the what you know his perspectives and stuff like that and then um and then learning from my my fellow 
um, elite um, blind triathletes. Um, you know, a, a guy like uh, like uh, Aaron Shides, who's actually a, he lives out there in Seattle. Uh, yeah, as well. So, uh, hey, so yet another well, name that like I've I've briefly talked to Aaron. I can't claim that yeah. I know him, but like a yeah, small yeah. world, man. Yep, yep. So you know, learning from learning from him and his guides as well. Um, you know, the way they can, the way they can take corners at, at super high speed on, on technical race courses is, is incredible. And, you know, that's, you know, that's stuff that, you know, Zach and I are working on it, you know, and, and eventually I'll, I'll work on with, uh, you know, with Andy and, and other guides down the line. So, yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, learning from, learning from people, um, that are, that are more experienced than you, um, you know, that have been doing this longer than you. I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. Um, and plus you get to nerd out with them and you get to you know, be a sponge and absorb all their knowledge mm-hmm. and uh, develop your own, develop your own knowledge. And then, you know, when you're riding with people that are less experienced than you, it's, it's your, you know, I, I feel it's a you know, responsibility to help them along as much as possible as well. So you know, we I totally, try. I totally relate to that. Like, I don't, like I joke with like my, personal friends i'm like i don't i I even feel weird saying i have a youtube channel because like i don't know i don't think i fit like the classic youtuber persona right like that's not me but like it's just a place for me to nerd out about bikes like and nerd out about triathlon like that's all it's just because like in my free time i would want to be doing what you and i are doing right now like if like i would like i would want to talk to you about this even if we weren't being live streamed live streamed it's just fun so like it's Uh, cool yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you know, I am, you know, it's it's funny. Like the uh, the bike takes up the the majority of uh, of our discussions, just because. Well, I mean, the bike is also the longest part of uh, most triathlons, and it is. yeah, I mean, I could I could nerd out about you know wetsuits, swim tethers, caps, goggles, yeah, uh, you know, you know, pool toys or no pool toys, or uh, you know, bike you know bike you know tires and and wheels and um you know running shoes running tether style you know run you know different ways of running with with running tethers um you know here's one here's what i want to put you on the spot uh it's 7 19 i set this meeting to go to the, the zoom meeting we're on to 7 30 i don't want us to get cut off i don't know if it's gonna like <laughs> let us keep going or whatever i wanted to okay. i want to ask this question and then i want to ask um another question which is i, I want to give you an opportunity to like tell people stuff that like, like from a pro, what should people know about triathlon? Cause that's, that's an aspect that I can't talk to. So like, I think that's a really cool question. You don't have to answer this question. I won't hold it against you if you don't, but you just said like, you're, we can, we can talk about like nerd out about bike stuff or whatever. Do you have a controversial opinion? Cause I have a lot of controversial opinions about like bike stuff. I'll, I'll tell you mine first, just for a little, l- yeah. let me, let me think. Um, and I'm I'm gonna say this with a felt. I have a felt IA14 right behind me in shot. So like, there's a little bit of hypocrisy here. But I don't think the physical bike matters that much. I look at like Dave's or like like the Iron War Iron Wars guys from like the 90s, right? Going like sub nines on, you know, crappy frames with you know like just garbage wheels but they were just fit as hell right like like i'm not gonna say that like obviously the bike does make a difference like we all know they could have gone faster had they been on aero frames like we all get that yeah but i'm just like i've never been dropped in a race and thought to myself like damn if only i had dura ace i wouldn't have got dropped like (laughs) like so that's kind of my controversial opinion it's not that i don't think bikes matter but i just think like I don't know. I'm like, if people spend as much time working out as they did on forums talking about how to lose 50 grams, they'd be yeah. faster. Yeah, no, to- totally, totally agree. Um, yeah, like, I don't know if I have any, anything super controversial, um, you know, as far as, as that. Um, my, I mean, my big thing is I want to, you know, I'm trying to like the bait, you know, like, you know, as, as a, as someone who does this for a living and who does this a lot, um, 
you know, everyone is always asking like, you know, what, what's the, you know, what's the secret, you know, how do you do this? How, you know, how do you do that? So, <laughs> yeah. I like what, what, what age groupers and, you know, and amateurs are, are doing is exactly what I'm doing. Like there is no secret when it comes to triathlon training and racing. Um, like, you know, I, I'm like, I'm totally open about like, like I got no problem saying like, you know, my, you know, you know, my 20 minute power is, you know, 280 or 300 Watts or whatever, whatever it is these days. I don't, I don't even know. Um, but, uh, because there's, there's no, there's no secret. Um, the basics are, you know, that the basics are remarkably sexy when they're done well. Um, but if we don't do the basics, you know, then, then we can't, get to the, the complicated stuff. Like, um, you know, I like, I'm not, I'm not like, I guess the only controversial thing, like I'm not super big on pool toys. Um, until you say that I look, that was almost (laughs) the example I gave. Yeah. Uh, Like I'm not to cut you off. It's just like, it's, you see these people rolling up with like two backpacks full of noodles and I'm like, go swim, man. Yeah. I, I, my, my tools That's are, funny. I have, I have a, I have a, I have a pair of swim paddles. I have a pool buoy and I have a pair of fins. Those are, those are the toys I use. Um, I do probably, I do probably four or five different drills. Um, and the only reason I use toys, um, is for specific, um, for specific drills or for specific sets. And, and that's yep. only because I swim like 15 to 20,000 meters a week normally, right? You know, at, at, at the peak of training. Um, so, you know, that's when you're, so, when, that's you're so trying, funny, when, when you're trying to swim 4k a day, um, and then you still got a, a two hour ride and a one hour, or a two hour ride and a one hour run to do later. Um, those, those fins are really nice. So, but nah, that, that's about, uh, that's probably like the most controversial thing i've got so i i spot on agree uh warrior says uh bro science says you have to be a weight weenie completely arrow at all times where the biggest sunglasses ride a fourteen thousand dollar pinarello with envies <laughs> have you ever have you ever heard the uh the i think it's more of like a a, a weightlifting term but um yeah. don't major in the minors to your point yeah. of like people spend so much time trying to optimize this last 10 percent while yeah. not either not getting the big stuff right or just like thinking it doesn't matter or overemphasizing that 10 percent, i don't know my, my 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 coach tells me do simple better and uh my my dad puts it a little more succinctly he's just he just says keep it stupid simple <laughs> i like it uh last thing i'll say and i, I don't want to like jump into a huge rant but um i think Maybe one of the things, like, I don't know how much you've watched my YouTube. Like, I, I do some product reviews here and there because, like, we all have to buy crap to do this yeah. sport. Like, you know, undeniably, like, you need stuff and you want the stuff you have to be good. But uh, I'm really, I don't like the, um, I don't, I don't like how it almost becomes a sport of buying stuff. Like, I, I really deeply support, like, the democratization of like you know swimming is a simple sport i mean it's not simple but like it it, like you know you need water to swim and you need a you do need a bike and then running is like the most basic sport there is on earth and i think there's something pure about like it shouldn't be about rolling up with 20 grand worth of gear like i love looking at those iron wars guys you know dave scott all those like mark allen like if you were to just bring them into modern day, like triathlon is such a weird sport because like you have people who are so incredibly welcoming and you also have a, sm- a much smaller section, but like there's a little bit of like, oh, I have the most expensive bike here. You know, I think thankfully not very much, but I, I really like how it's like, you know, you don't really need the expensive gear. So I try to be kind of pretty conscious of that. For sure. No, I mean, look, you need like, this is, you know, especially as you get to, you know, higher and higher levels and, you know, you're always, we're always looking to improve, you know, improve yeah. ourselves. And sometimes that, it, that does mean improving equipment. I mean, one of yep. the, one of the biggest things 
for me was you know, going from uh, from an old you know uh, you know a bike that had uh, you know been my trusty steed for a long time, but I had to upgrade when I when I started racing at the at the World Triathlon you know professional level. Um, yeah. you know, I mean it's it's you know sometimes it does matter. Um, it does. You know I uh, you know I was a, I was a skeptic of like is the wind like our wind tunnels really going to you know, like, is it really worth going into a wind tunnel? But, you know, you go into a wind tunnel and you, it's like, wow, just moving my hands from, you know, this position to this position saves 20 watts. Which uh, is wild. Right, yeah. right. We, we didn't even have time to get into that, but like short version, like wind tunnels work. Like the science yeah, is yeah, real. They work. They, yep. Yeah, they work. Uh, yeah, they, they, they definitely work. <laughs> we could do a whole nother show on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I, I like it, like it. I mean, like you said, triathlon is, I mean, it's, it's simple. You, you swim, bike, you run mm-hmm. and you have fun doing it. I mean, that's, that's all the guys in, you know, you know, on Fiesta Island did back in what was it? 1974 or whatever the, yeah. whenever the triathlon was, you know, you know, triathlon took off because of this, this Ironman thing, because a, a bunch of guys are, were arguing about, you know, what it, you know, who, who, who's the fittest, you know, who are the fittest people, cyclists or you know, swimmers, cyclists, or runners, and then they said, "Let's find out." Right. So, like that's all. That's all. Like our our sport is just, you know, grab a pair of running shoes, um, grab your bike, you know, throw on a bathing suit, and can you you know swim, bike, and run? Have an adventure, whether that's you know Xterra or whether you want to go super long like Ironman, or you want to go ridiculously short like Major League or Super League, or you wanna or you wanna compete at the uh, the Olympic and Paralympic level or, or, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we're like triathlon, like triathletes, we're a family, you guys. And you know, we're all, we all suffer the same. We all have the same things. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I could tell you so many stories about, you know, <laughs> from a guy peeing on me during the middle of a 70.3 to a guy nice. puking and, and it hitting me, you know, on the, you know, and, and it hitting me, um, in the middle of a race to, you know, to, you know, to, you know, to, to dropping my, my bike shorts in a, in a, in a change tent and like trying to open up a, trying to open up a gel at the same time. I mean, like we yeah. all have these mess ups and these funnies and like triathlon is just awesome. And we're, we're a family. We all, we all love it. And, uh, it's just a blast. It's awesome. Tell you what, I hope I don't, it's seven twenty nine. I don't think zoom is going to cut us off. If it does, I will, I will get you back somehow i'll figure it out um but i want to give you an opportunity like uh whatever you want to say like like training tips or just what i mean uh, that was a pretty cool thing you just said there but like you know for a pro to people who are watching this like what's something that you know maybe something they don't get to hear very often or uh, whatever you want to say i think would be really valuable i'm curious too (laughs) (laughs) oh man it's it's it i'll be honest it's still weird calling myself a, a a a pro, even though I've been doing this now for, you know, officially as a professional for, you know, two, three years now, but, um, man, like, like, I don't really have any super crazy pearls of wisdom. Um, I would just, I would just, I would just say, you know, do simple, better, keep it stupid, simple. Um, you know, remember why you got into, you know, what, you know, it's, it's cliche, but why'd you get into this sport, you know, for the, in, in the first place, um, you know, keep an eye on, keep an eye on your vision, um, yeah. your vision, your vision being like, why, why am I doing this? Like, why do I love this sport? Um, and, you know, just, just remember that every time you, you, uh, you know, you get, you step onto a pool deck every time you, you know, you're putting on your bike kit or, you know, you're grabbing your shoes to go out for a run or, or anything like that. And, and, and as I said, you know, just a, a few minutes ago, um, there's no secret to triathlon training, whether you train, you know, whether you have a, a fancy power meter or a fancy bike or, uh, or you train with, you know, per, rate of perceived exertion or, or whatever. Um, like it's, there's nothing, there's nothing fancy about this sport. It's, you know, it's, it's splashing around, having fun in the water. It's, uh, it's riding your bike um as fast as you can or as fast as you want to like you're a little kid again and and then it's running and then it's running and having a good old a good old time yeah. uh 
find, find ways to find ways to enjoy the sport. Um, because this, I mean, it's, it's a lot, um, you know, and, and surround yourself with, with a great, with a great team of people. Um, because the people that you do surround yourself with, they, um, you know, they, they can, they can build you up, they can bring you down. Um, and I, I, you know, I personally like to surround myself with, with positive people that, that also push me, um, cause they want to see me do my best. And, and I, and I, I return the favor cause I want to see, you know, the people around me, uh, do their best as well. Um, but yeah, so kind of a long answer and, and honestly, right. it's not, it's, not, it's nothing that no one has, hasn't heard before. Um, just, you know, like I said, do the simple things and just strive to do them better every day. You know, keep it stupid, simple, keep an eye on your vision. Yeah. I think that's, that's a great way to put it. Uh, it, it you and I need like four more hours. Um, <laughs> I'm trying not to, I'll just, I just, I just want to latch onto one thing specifically that you said, because I thought it was really, really good. Uh, you said at the beginning, you're like, it's a weird label to put yourself like to say you're a pro. Uh, this is going to sound so dumb. When I wrote my Instagram bio, I wrote, I wrote like ultra runner and I'm yeah. like, yeah, that's true. I have done that, but it's just like, it, I remember someone once asked me something like, how does it feel to be able to like go run? so far and i'm like i feel like a normal person i don't feel different like walking around like i don't feel different walking around you know i feel like me it's just normal me yeah and like yeah. That, i think that imposter syndrome i think that's a thing that a lot of people have i think it's a very real thing um oh, for sure. but yeah it's like it, having confident in, confidence in your own abilities trusting the training understanding like hey i've worked hard at this and like i'm not in even if, you know, not saying you have to be great to not have imposter syndrome, but just to be able to say like, you know, I've put work into this and like, I can call myself a triathlete or, you know, like that's, that's be proud of that. Uh, no, absolutely. No, I mean, uh, um, I'll try to keep this, this, this story real. real <laughs> you and I story. are both bad about that. Oh, go yeah. for it, man. I, I, I'll admit it. I'm horrible. I'm horrible about it. But, uh, but, but no, like, so I, uh, so when I reached out to, uh, so I, I had to build up a lot of, uh, um, I had to like talk myself into reaching out to, to Andy Potts to, to guide me for, for the last call triathlon. And, uh, I, I told him that we were like, I don't know, we'd been riding and training together for like a month or something at this point. And, and I, I'm like, dude, like I, uh, I'm not going to lie. I was, uh, super nervous reaching out to you. Cause like, I mean, you're and you're Andy freaking Potts, like yeah. you're a legend, and, and he and he just laughed, and he's like, "Nah, dude, I'm just, I'm just Andy, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a regular dude." So I love that. It, it, it's, it's and you know, so like like I said, I'm you know, you know, people people see me as this as this you know fast you know, you know inspirational blind triathlete, whatever, whatever you want to call me, like fast, you know, pro triathlete, but nah, guys, I'm just, um, I'm just a regular dude. Just, just, I'm just a regular dude who loves to swim, bike and run. Um, just like, just like everybody else that, <laughs> that loves your channel, man. So awesome. Yeah. I appreciate it. And you know, it's, it's, it was really cool. And like, I, I thought it was kind of neat even today is like, you know, we got to talk about your, you know, being a blind athlete, which is something that, you know, I can't relate to, but I love hearing people's perspectives. And then like as an athlete, because like, it's this, it's like, you know, it's Kyle. It's like, it's not, you know, whatever you label you want to put on it. It's just, it's yeah. a really cool perspective to hear. Uh, it's, you know, I mean, I mean, look, I mean, I'm, I'm a dude, I'm a dude that, you know, that has no eyes and I can't see like, apart from that, I, you know, I love, I love to train. I love to race. I love to, I love to drink beer. Um, I love to eat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I do yeah. all the same, all the same stuff. And I love, you know, love, love it all. So, yeah. Uh, you know, and as you, as we both figured out, we love, uh, we love talking, you know, triathlon and, and athletics Dude. and whatever. Could talk way. Well, I, I, this is obviously super informal, but yeah, let's, let's tell you what, after you qualify and after you go to the Paralympics, we'll have you back. Tell me about that. Heck yeah, man! No, I, I, I'm, I'd be totally down for that. That'd uh, be a whatever. blast. Yeah. Couple, couple it. last comments. Uh, somebody, warrior again. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Thanks, Kyle, for coming on. 
Uh, David, super quick question. How long do you have to train to be in shape for an Ironman? Uh, just to respect Kyle's time, I'm going to punt this one pretty quickly and say, uh, Kyle, you, you give me a super short answer. I'm going to say, I've seen some people who are like at a healthy weight go from a little bit of athleticism to completing an Ironman under the time limit in 18 months. But I'm going to say two years is like, you're not going to hate your life. Like, you know, I, I, I think there's a little bit of like, I don't know. I think you should enjoy race day. And, you know, I think you shouldn't just hate race day. Um, I'm going to say two years to go from a little bit of athleticism to having an okay day. Kyle, reasonable. What do you think? I, I think two years is, is really solid. Yeah. I, I mean, so my, my, you know, my journey was about, was about 20 months. So yeah, yeah. I started, started training in, in January of 2015, did my first Ironman in August of 2016. So yeah, I think, you know, 20 to 24 months is very reasonable and you're not going to hate, you're not going to hate your life. <laughs> yeah, we all, we all see these stories of people who are like, oh yeah, I, I, I did my first 10 K in in December. And then in August I did a full and you know, yeah. like those people exist, like the, those are real people. People have done that's that, a, but just as like a piece of advice, yeah. I'm like, man, that's a, that's, that opens you up to so much injury and hating it. And yeah, no, like, for, for, for me right now, if I was to go, um, if I wanted to go put an Ironman on, on the calendar, um, I would want a solid 16 to 20 week training block, but, yeah. you know, but that's, you know, with five years of you know, five, six years of triathlon experience in my legs and, right. you know, having done, you know, three Ironmans as well. So, you know, <laughs> that's, that's a lot, that's a lot different. So if you're, if you're trying to do your first Ironman, I'd give yourself a, you know, solid, a, a good 18 to 24 months, um, you know, but, but go do it. Like, like you gotta, you gotta make the commitment and you just gotta go do it. And then last question that I'm going to let you go, Kyle, David asks again, what's a respectable time for an Ironman? I genuinely wholeheartedly believe that anyone who does an Ironman, that is a respectable time. That's not a punt answer. I, I think that it's such a big goal already that like if you've done it i'm like you you are deserving of respect for having done it that that's my answer just straight up 16 hours 59 minutes uh 59.999 seconds how about that yeah <laughs> and like i know that there's somebody who's like oh you know what he means though that's that's a like like what's a, and i'm like no that is genuinely like the, the that like i respect anyone who's put the time in and trained for it straight up that's my answer if you if you train for it, you go out there, you complete it. I don't care if you, you know, if you doggy paddle the whole swim, if you ride a fat bike or you ride a, you know, a, a fixed gear bike or you ride the most expensive bike and you and you complete the marathon and you do it all in one go and you do it in under that 17 hour cutoff time, you and, and you you receive the title of Ironman. Yeah. You know, whether 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 you want to call yourself an Iron Man, an Iron Woman. Um, iron person, what, whatever, whatever it is, we all have, you know, we've all got that title, um, you know, you know, from, you know, Jan Frodeno, who, you know, who's got the, the fastest time in Kona to, uh, you know, to the, you know, to, to sister Madonna Buddha, who, you Love know, her. You know, 90 something, you know, 80 something years old, 90 something years old and, and doing Ironmans there. Everyone's an Ironman. Yeah. Uh, if you, if you, if you complete it and you complete the distance and, and under that, and under that, and under that time, um, I don't care what your time is. Um, I'm going to give you a big hug, high five and want to have a beer with you. Spot on. Let's end it there. I think that's the perfect way to end it. Kyle, hang on a sec. Don't hang up. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Kyle. This was a blast. I, I'm, I know it's late there. Thanks for hanging out with me. I, I had so much fun just hanging out. We can have a virtual beer sometime. Uh, heck yeah man we, uh, it would be cool if you and i ever do i mean our circles are close we have a lot of a lot of shared connections i'm sure that at some point we'll do a race together or i can just fly in like that'd be a blast oh dude we totally we totally should man i'm 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 totally down for that that'd be but, cool yeah, uh, awesome uh, it's again sometime i i, I you know i like it, like we said i love i love this kind of stuff and especially when it's just hanging out talking talking swim bike run it was fun. Uh, if anyone wants to follow Kyle, uh, 
the the Instagram is Iron Kyle, but it's it's I like an I, so like E Y E R O N K Y L E. That is correct. So and that's then a, your website is uh, website is kylecoon.com. So K Y L E C O O N dot com. You can um, check me out there. Check out all my uh, my race reports and um, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, just give me a follow on Instagram at Iron Kyle E Y E R O N K Y L E. And then uh, check out kylecoon.com. And um, if you guys, uh, you know, if you enjoyed tonight and uh, I can answer any more questions, shoot me a, shoot me a message on Instagram or uh, um, shoot, me a, shoot me a message through the website. Heck yeah. Awesome. Hang out here, Kyle Sec. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. It was super fun. I'm going to try to do more of these. I, I, it takes a little bit to set up, and I'm still getting comfortable with this myself. Um, but every, you know, between Kyle Coon, Kyle Peace, I got to find another Kyle. Um, but it's a, it's a ton of fun to just hang out and chat and answer questions. So thanks for joining everybody. Um, I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Have a good one.